Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode 2 as we take a look at more gameplay from The Chase of the Bismarck, published by VUCA Simulations and designed by Jack Green and Patrick Gephardt. In this episode we're going to take a look at naval combat and we couldn't ask for a more dramatic setting. On one side we have the Hood and the Prince of Wales with assorted destroyers going up against the Bismarck and the Prince Eugen. Not only that, but the King George V with a couple of cruisers and destroyers are on their way trying to nudge their way into the battle. Let's take a quick summary of what happened up to now and then we're going to jump right in with this epic battle of dreadnoughts. Before we start into gameplay, I want to make two comments about the previous video. The first one is that I made a mistake. Uh, I used random spotting rules for German tankers and there was a change in the errata file that says you don't do that. Now there's actually an example in the rulebook of German tankers getting spotted by random uh, spotting, so I just missed it in the errata. It's actually, it seems like a small thing, but the reason it's so big is that it's been really easy for the British to spot the tankers. They actually spotted one up here. And right now they've got this cruiser, the Birmingham, that's gonna actually sink this tanker. And if the tankers get sunk, it's really hard for the Bismarck, which is here, to get past this picket line and Iceland and get out into the convoy so they can hunt. And so it changes the whole nature of the game. So I wanted to mention, in case people are watching this to learn how to play, definitely make sure you catch that rule in the errata and don't use random spotting for the tankers. That means it's much more likely they're su they'll survive, which means means it's much more likely for the Bismarck to be able to get past the picket line into the convoy lanes and have a long-term strategy in the game. So the second thing is, um, a bunch of people commented about how, you know, this is a two-player game and you should play it two-player, and, and I totally get that. The reason I'm playing it solitaire is to make a video about the game, right? <laughs> because uh, making a a video, making a good video about the game with two players playing would be really hard and would probably take me about four or five times as long. I could make a bad video pretty quickly, but making a good player, it's just so much easier for me to uh, explain both sides and the thinking from both sides and do it this way. So that's why I'm doing it. Having said that, um, the solitaire experience has been much more positive than I had initially anticipated. So I think after this, I'm going to make just a short video talking about that. Now let's jump into a quick recap of what happened in the previous turn, and then we're gonna jump in to our current situation. So if we look here, we have the Bismarck is here. This is a sighted task force indicating the Bismarck and the Prince Eugen that the British have picked up. Likewise, the two British task forces that are here, Task Force 1 and Task Force 2, have been spotted by the Germans everybody's in this hex. Now what had happened was, this is right now on the evening of the 22nd of May, 1941, the Bismarck and the Prinz Eugen were spotted up here, just a little bit to the northeast. They were trying to run this line to the south of Iceland, actually get up into the Denmark Strait, but the weather was so good, everything got spotted, and now their tankers are gonna get sunk. So the long-term strategy didn't seem to work out. So the British, the German strategy is, let's race here, where they had spotted the Prince of Wales and the Hood, and let's engage them, hope we get lucky and maybe sink one of those, and that will give us enough victory points to win the game, and we can get out of here. But down here to the southeast was another task force, task force, four, it was actually task force three at that point in time, that had the Victorious and the King George V, a big battleship with some cruisers. The British split those and raced the King George two cruisers and more destroyers up here. So instead of a two on two battle, there's actually seven British ships in this area, counting the destroyer flotillas and two Germans. Now, the two British task forces are actually split into task force one and task force two. And that has a bearing because they can't engage them together initially at the start, they're in different places. And how combat works is when sighted or shadowed uh, ships are in the same hex, either side can initiate combat. And if they both sides, if the British go first. So the British have a choice. If they could say, we don't want to have combat, in which case they would pass the initiative on to the Germans. Um, and, but the British, I think, want to force the hand here now because they outnumber the Germans and there's a fairly good chance we can get all of the British ships attacking the German ships at once. Now, the British will then initiate combat and they're going to have the Hood, the Prince of Wales, and the Destroyer Flotilla initiate combat against the Prince Eugen and the Bismarck. So let's set that up and see how it works. As we start out, I just wanna show how the Naval Combat Board works. It's this very long, thin, horizontal board that starts with the combatants at either end. Now, I can't video this, so instead of showing it in long format, 
I'm going to do this, which basically just overlaps the board. This is going to be the British side up here. They're coming this way and it connects from here down to the bottom left over here and runs this way. And we'll, that, I think that'll work to get everything on the board a little bit better. Let's take a quick look at our British combatants. These are the cards that dictate all the stats for each chip in the game. This is the hood, got a pretty good hull, pretty good primary armament on the bow and the stern and a secondary armament with an invasion of, invasion of 28. Here's the Prince of Wales, battleship, a little bit bigger hull and primary armament in the bow, stern armament not so weak, and it's got an unreliable primary armament, which means that on a roll of one to four, it gets all its gun factors fire. On a five to nine, it's only reduced by half. So it, it has some problems with its uh, firing functions here. Evasion of 28. Lastly, the uh, Prince of Wales and Hood Destroyer Flotilla. So this is a number of destroyers represented by one counter in the game so that there aren't a lot of them floating all around. Fast evasion. The nice thing about it here is it's got eight torpedoes. We've got to pull those out now. There we go. I've added a stack of torpedoes there. Hull of six and then a, prime, a secondary armament of six only. Now I won't mention the other three, other four British ships. So you have two cruisers, the King George and the, another flotilla of destroyers because they aren't in the battle yet. The British are hopefully, hoping they can join the battle, but they may or may not depending upon how the battle goes forward. Let's take a look at the Germans, the Bismarck. It's already been hit by aircraft, so its hull is down to 11, primary armament on the bow has been weakened, and its evasion has been reduced to 28. It also, its radar broke, so it uh, gets a little bit of a firing disadvantage here. Still, ton of firepower and a massive hull. The Bismarck is a beast. Prince Eugen, a cruiser. It's got 12 torpedoes, 10 and plus a marker of 2 underneath it. Not so much of a hull uh, or primary armor to the bow and the stern, but those torpedoes could wreak havoc if we can get it to within medium range or less. So that might be a strategy for the Germans as well. So now that we know that the combatants are, we have to bring them onto the battle mat. And you'll notice these numbers scattered from well, we can see about four to nine, but they actually go from one to nine. And those indicate the visibility. You see the little eyeball there. So we drop the ships down at the current visibility level on opposite sides of the mat. So the Hood, the Prince of Wales, and their flotilla of destroyers are going to be put at four on this left side of the map. They have to go all the way here, then all the way back here to get to the German four. And we're going to put that over here. Prinz Eugen. Now the Prinz Eugen and the Bismarck start uh, re re kind of receding, retreating from battle because they're going the other way. So the British are chasing. So the, the Prinz Eugen and the Bismarck. So if we take a look at the Prinz Eugen and the Bismarck, they are running away from the British ships. The British ships are pursuing and that's important as things start out. One last procedural thing before we start the battle. You'll notice that there are thick white lines around every third, bo third box here and then there are dotted lines in between the boxes. These uh, triple, these thick white boxes represent sea zones and this is how you calculate range. So this is one sea zone that consists of these three boxes. When you do movement, the movement goes by each individual rectangle within a sea zone. So this would be one, two, three, four for movement purposes, but for range purposes, we calculate the distance in the number of sea zones. So we have, and it's how many are intervening. So we have one, two, and this half of the one here, three here, four, five sea zones between the British and the German forces determined by the, the starting visibility, and five sea zones is long range. Four to six is long range. So both the forces start out at long range from each other. Now all the preliminaries are taken care of. It's about 5.30 on the evening, 22nd of May, 1941. The Hood, the Prince of Wales, and their destroyers are, are chasing or closing on the German battleship Bismarck and the cruiser Prinz Eugen who are breaking off from the contact. The fight starts now. This follows, combat follows a combat sequence of six steps. The first step is torpedo attacks. In order for ships to use their torpedoes, so the destroyers here for the British up here have torpedoes and the Prinz Eugen have torpedoes. But in order to use the torpedoes, you have to be at medium range at less. We already calculated the range as five. That's long range. So no torpedoes can be fired now. So now we go to step two, which is both, all ships can fire. 
At long range, however, only primary armaments can fire, and the destroyer flotilla doesn't have a primary armament. It only has a secondary arm armament. So the Prince of Wales, the Hood, Prinz Eugen and Bismarck all can fire. Now fire is considered to be simultaneous, but for procedural reasons the, reasons, the attacker will go first, but we're gonna determine what that firing is first. So we're gonna have the Prince of Wales and the Hood Actually, instead of going right after the Bismarck, the Prince Eugen with those 12 uh, torpedoes represents a pretty serious threat if it can close range. So we're going to have the Prince of Wales and the Hood actually initiate by firing everything they can at the Prince Eugen. For the German side, the Prince Eugen has a, as a cruiser has a penalty against firing against battleships or battle cruisers. Likewise, the Germans should be a little bit concerned about that destroyer flotilla. So we're going to have the Prince Eugen fire on the destroyer flotilla. We're going to have the Bismarck fire at the more threatening target, which is the Hood. So that's our allotments. Now let's figure out how this firing goes. We're going to start with the Prince of Wales and the Hood because they are the attackers. So there's a few things that apply here as the Prince of Wales file fires on to the Bismarck. First up, it's, chase, it's closing, so it can only use its primary armament. It can't use its secondary armament, which means that all nine of these fire factors can fire. However, we'll notice here that the, uh, the Prince of Wales has an unreliable primary, uh, primary armament. On a roll of a five to nine, we divide these gun factors by two and round up. So we're gonna see if this fires effectively. They get a seven, they don't. So we go down to nine and we're cut in half down to four and a half, which rounds up to five. Furthermore, they're firing at long range, which divides this again by two and rounds it up. So we're down to three firing factors. And that's the number of dice that we roll. However, let's take a look at the die roll modifiers here. There are a number of die roll modifiers that are gonna go into this. First up, uh, we have to, is the target acquired? It's not, because this is the first time it's firing. Once you hit it, you get to acquire it. Firing ship has radar, it does. So this Prince of Wales has radar, so minus one to the die rolls, that's good. Firing ship is closing or breaking off. It is, because they're chasing, so plus one. So those two things wash out. It's versus a closing or breaking off ship, it is because the uh, Prinz Eugen is running away. So it's gonna be a plus one modifier to the die roll. It's a cruiser versus battleship. No, this is a battleship versus cruiser, so we're all okay there. The last one we look at here is visibility plus one because it's a, a visibility of four. So we have plus two to each one of these die rolls and we're gonna roll and check on the naval combat, the hit table here at long range. So we roll three dice for the Prince of Wales firing its forward primary armament here. We get an eight, a four, a five, and we add two to each one of those results. So if we look at the eight at long range, plus two, that is a 10, that, co that completely misses. A five plus two is a seven, that misses as well. And then we get a four plus two is a six. It hits the secondary armament of the Prinz Eugen. Now we'll notice here, the secondary armament on the Prinz Eugen, this Prinz Eugen doesn't have a secondary armament. Primary armaments that are converted, are converted to hull hits if there aren't any points left, but if there's no secondary armament, it's treated as no effect. However, it did get a result other than a miss. So we're gonna go back to our board here. We're gonna drop an A on the Prinz Eugen because it's been acquired by the Prince of Wales. So the next time the Prince of Wales fires on the Prince Eugen, it will get a little bit of a die roll modifier. But the Germans are fortunate. The Prince of Wales does no damage to the Prince Eugen on its first step. Let's see what happens to the Hood. The Hood's primary armament is a seven. Cut in half is a four and rounded up. So the Prince, uh, the Hood is gonna get a four. Same die roll modifiers. So not acquired is minus one. Uh, it's not acquired, so no bonus there. Firing ship has radar, yes it does. So plus one, uh, minus one there. But it's versus a closing off, it's firing is, is closing or breaking off, and it's invisibility four. So it's a plus two to everything. The hood gets four shots. We get a seven, a six, a five, and a two. Let's check the naval combat, the damage table here. Seven plus two is a nine. At long range, that's a miss. Six plus two is eight. At long range, that's a miss. Five plus two is seven. At long range, that's a miss. Two plus two is primary armament on the bow. That's a hit. 
so while we're here, we'll also drop the target acquired one. Well, we'll go over to the ships on the board there when we do that. Let's go take out the Prinz Eugen's primary armament there. So the Prinz armament, primary armament on the bow takes a hit. We put a little red block there indicating that it's gone down to a strength of two and the Prinz Eugen has been acquired by the hood. So we're gonna drop a target acquired B on the hood and then we're gonna drop it on the Eugen, the Prinz Eugen. Prinz Eugen getting dialed in by both British ships. Now the Germans chance for revenge. Starting to pick up speed now. The Prinz Eugen's firing its stern because it's breaking off. So it fires its back guns, basically. Three cut in half, rounded up, is two. The die roll modifier, just as it was with the British forces, is plus two. So it gets two shots at the destroyer flotilla. It gets a seven and a zero. That's not a 10. A zero is a particularly devastating shot. At long range, a zero plus two is special damage there and the other one the seven plus two that completely misses special damage means we roll on the special damage result chart lots of kind of crazy things can happen here with this and there are no die roll modifiers for this let's see what happens here we get a one oh three hull hits and an evasion marker must be pulled. A direct hit here, really, by the Prince Eugen onto the flood, the the, the flood, uh, the destroyer flotilla there. Let's go. So the destroyer flotilla takes three hits there, reducing its strength down from six, down to three. That's a particularly brutal shot, and it has to pull an evasion shit here to reduce its speed. So it's really kind of reeling from the blow there. Just minus one actually. So it doesn't really impact its speed too much. Still a 34 evasion. A good start for the Germans, however. The Prinz Eugen delivering a pretty deadly blow. Likewise, back on the big board here, we're gonna drop a C target acquired remark and then target acquired C for the Prinz Eugen. So, and we can probably remember these anyway, but we might as well drop them down. So the Prinz Eugen dialing in the destroyers. Now let's go fire the Bismarck. Now the Bismarck does not have its functioning radar, so instead of a plus two, it's gonna be a plus three modifier, but it has nine, oh, it has eight, actually, primary armaments on the stern. Rounding that down, that gives a, a rounding, it, that cuts down to four. So it gets four shots, all at plus three. Bismarck taking aim at the hood. We get a three, a six, a, f a three, four, a three, four, five, and six. The six plus three is a nine, that misses. The five plus three is an eight, that misses. The four plus three is a seven, that misses. The three plus three is a six, it hits the secondary armament on the hood. Hood, secondary armament reduced to zero and the Bismarck has acquired its target, which will give it a better shot the next time. So we drop target acquired markers for the Bismarck on the hood. That brings us in to the end of the firing range and that stage. So now we go to the torpedo hit determination stage. There are no torpedoes fired, so that stage is skipped. And now we go to the movement phase. To execute movement, we go in order of the evasion speed, lowest to highest, and if there's a tie, the attacker goes first. The slowest ship out on the mat right now, in the battle right now, is the Prince of Wales with an evasion of 27. Now, ships can turn and then move, but they can't move and then turn and their speed is determined by their evasion. With an evasion speed of, with an evasion of 27, the uh, Prince of Wales can move three if it would like to. But I think what we're gonna do is, we're gonna have the chips little slug it out here a little bit. So we're gonna have the Prince of Wales basically go into an opening position here, which is gonna allow it to fire both its primary and its stern armaments. So it's gonna kind of twist that way and ready to open fire. Likewise, the next two slowish chips or the Bismarck, which normally has an evasion of 30, but was hit by that air attack down to 28, and the Hood, which also has a 28. So we're gonna have the Hood do the same thing. It's gonna shift to opening position to be able to bring all its guns to bear on the battle. The Bismarck will accept that invitation here. It's going to turn and bring all its guns to bear on the battle as well. Now we go to our faster ships. The next fastest, the Prince Eugen has a speed of 32. The destroyers have a speed of 34 after their evasion was reduced. The Prince Eugen, I think it's best hope. It's still in pretty good shape. I think what we might wanna to try to do with it here is to see if we can get it to close to get destroyer shot, to get the torpedo shots off on some of those big ships. Cause it's got 12 torpedoes. It could really wreak havoc if some of those hit. So let's think just for a moment about that. So we are going to turn the Prince Eugen and we're gonna have it, it's got a speed of four. We're gonna have it move full speed ahead four 
to close. So one, two, three, four, right into this zone here. And that will actually, you'll note it skipped over a zone marker here. So that means its range has gone down. It's one, two, three, four squares away, four zones away, which is still long range, right? It has to get to three to get to medium range. And so it still isn't within torpedo range, but it is getting there. British destroyers are going to accept that invitation. They're going to do the same thing. They're the fast ones out here. One, two, three, four. Screaming ahead, basically try to get in with torpedo range. And they have succeeded now because they've closed the sea zone. So the destroyers, one, two, three zones away from the Prince Eugen. The Prince Eugen and the destroyers could fire torpedoes at each other, which will be a decision they'll have to make in the next round. That's the movement phase. Now we go to step six, uh, step five, which is the abort combat attempt. If any ship were had six intervening zones between it and its opponent, it could attempt to break off combat. Nothing applies here right now, so that doesn't happen. Now we go to step six, which is reinforcements. However, this is where we see if the King George, the cruisers, and the other destroyers can show up and help save the day. However, that only begins in round three. So the British ships are on their own for the, this round and the next two rounds before we see if the reinforcements arrive. We have completed round one. The only thing we do now is we change the red markers to blue to indicate what's happened to the damage. So we move the Prince Eugen down to two on its primary armament for the bow. The hood has lost its secondary armaments capacity altogether. Our destroyer has taken three hits. Its hull is reduced to 50%. It's down to three. Let's go to round two. So we go to round two, we start with step one, which is torpedo attacks. Now, both the destroyer here, the British destroyers have a range of one, two, three to the Prince Eugen, likewise, they're the same back and forth. Now you can fire up to three torpedoes in a round, and I think each ship should do that. So the Prince Eugen is, because it has 12 torpedoes, torpedoes are pretty deadly as we can understand. So the Prince Eugen is gonna fire three of its 12 torpedoes. We'll put these down here to mark it at the destroyer flotilla. That's the only thing that's within range. That leaves it with nine and I'll mark that up on its ship marker there because I feel like the Prince Eugen is gonna to have to get lucky to survive this perhaps. Likewise, we're gonna have our destroyer flotilla take its three torpedoes here and three of its eight torpedoes and fire them at the Prince Eugen coming bow on as well. So that takes care of that stage in the combat because we don't resolve these until after the firing because torpedoes take time to get there. So now we go to step two, which is firing, and it's gonna get particularly deadly now because all of these ships are in open position. So primary armament and secondary armament can fire. So this is where the fireworks should start. Let's figure this out. I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same exact thing. The Prince of Wales and the Hood are gonna to try to end the Prince Eugen because it's coming up, it's a very strong torpedo threat. And next turn, it could, next round, it could very well close to within torpedo range, which would pretty much create lots of problems for the British ships. So both the Hood, and they're dialed in, they have acquired the, the target on the Prince Eugen too. For the uh, Bismarck and the Prince Eugen, the Prince Eugen is going to continue to fire on the destroyers to try to eliminate them. The Bismarck will continue to fire on the Hood. Now the destroyers, can fire now, I think. Let's check that. The secondary armaments of the destroyers can fire, but they can only fire when they're in opening position. So right now they're in a closing position to the Prince Eugen, so the secondary armaments can, on the destroyers cannot fire, which is lucky for the Prince Eugen because they have six secondary armaments. So maybe a good idea in the next turn would be to turn these destroyers if they still are floating. Let's go now to the uh, Prince of Wales up here, firing at the Prince Eugen here as it tries to close within torpedo range. Prince of Wales can fire everything. We do have this unreliable uh, primary armament fire. Let's see if it kicks in this time. They get a six, so once again, their unreliable primary armaments fail and they're gonna cut everything in half. So they have nine on their bow and then they have five on their stern, 14 divided by two is seven. They are at long range, so we divide it again, which takes it down to three and a half, rounded up to four. Oh, no wait, they're, yes, firing at the Prince Eugen is still long range, because there's a space of four between them. So, wow, that goes down to 14, down to seven, down to four. So four shots for the Prince of Wales on the Prince Eugen. Let's see what happens here. I'll calculate the uh, die roll modifiers as well. There is a zero, so in some, that's, that's some low numbers there. So let's calculate these out and then I'll tell the results. 
So the zero, the three, and the three all hit. The zero particularly damaging because it does two hits plus an evasion marker, resulting in four hull hits on the Prinz Eugen plus an evasion marker. After applying all the damage, we can see that the Prinz Eugen only has one hull hit left. It is a shattering wreck after the Prince of Wales deals some particularly vicious damage to it. Let's have the hood fire now. The Prince Eugen looking pretty dire. The hood has 14 factors on its primary uh, armament in the bow and primary armament in the stern cut in half because it's long range. That is seven. We have six dice. We'll roll them here. I think we're going to see the ends of the end of the Prince Eugen here. Depends on what the numbers are. I'll calculate that damage and I'm going to roll one of the sevens that I know missed. It is a four, so I'll calculate these out and see what's left of the Prinz Eugen. The hood does three primary armament on the bow damage, uh, three force hull hits plus an evasion, and, it, and this, that, that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at what's left of the Prinz Eugen. Nothing. <laughs> it's well beyond its hull capacity. The Prinz Eugen, it got minus one evasion and its primary armament is blown to pieces. So the Prinz Eugen is slipping underneath the waves here. The first German ship is down and the German situation is suddenly turning quite dire. Because all combat is simultaneous, however, the Prinz Eugen gets one last blow here. Primary armament can fire at that destroyer flotilla, which is what it was targeting. It creates a plus one modifier. It gets two shots on the destroyer flotilla. It gets an eight and a one. We add one to that. At medium range, the eight misses, of course. The one, however, gets a plus one, gets a two, which is special damage. So let's roll on the special damage chart to see if the Prince Eugen can get some revenge here. It gets a zero. Oh, that's like the critical hit. So the zero is particularly deadly. You roll on this sub table, which is the, the kind of the extra critical hit on a ship. And we have to roll this die roll. It is sunk if the die roll is equal or, equal or lower than this number. Otherwise, it's three hull plus evasion. There's only three hull hits left on the destroyer flotilla. This is the end of the destroyer flotilla. It gets an eight, which would not be enough to sink it, but it is still three hull hits and evasion. Let's go to the destroyers now. The three hull hits on the destroyers here sink them. We'll draw an evasion marker just for kicks and giggles. But the Prince Eugen, as it's going down and getting battered by the Prince of Wales in the hood, kind of continues its murderous fire on the destroyer flotilla, which could be significant because the destroyers could have closed to next range on the Bismarck and fired off all their, tor well, more torpedoes at it. So, <laughs> yes, good work by the Prince Eugen, at least removing the, 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 the threat there. However, exchanging the Prince Eugen for the destroyer flotilla, definitely a win for the British so far. We're not done yet, however. The Bismarck gets to fire. The Bismarck has eight on its prime, uh, seven on its primary because it's reduced slightly damaged, and eight on its stern primary, giving it 15. It's firing at long range at the hood, which it's dialed in because it's acquired it from hitting it last round. 15 cut in half rounded up is still eight. So eight shots by the Bismarck on the hood. And the die roll modifiers for this, it's acquired the target, so it's minus one. The only plus modifier that applies to it is the visibility of a four, which is plus one. So these are straight up shots, no plus modifiers. We get eight dice. Let's roll four and four here. Oh, a zero and a one. Now this is at long range, so the eight and the nine miss. We will keep the zero and the ones in our head and we will roll four more dice. I'll pull those off. The zero, though, particularly deadly. That might be special damage, but you get a seven, a six, a four, and a nine. The second round, not nearly as good. Anything at a seven or greater misses. So the seven and the nine miss. The four and the six hit. So we have a zero, a one, a four, and a six. Let's see what damage the Bismarck did to the hood. So as we've got so far, we've got two hull plus one evasion. We have a special damage that will roll now. It hit the primary bow armament, reduced it by one, and it hit the secondary armament, which has already been reduced, so that one doesn't factor in. The special damage, however, is key. A zero here would actually get close to that potential for the hood to be totally destroyed. It gets a six, which is hull plus radar damage. Oh, that's going to impact future firing, right? 
So let's apply that damage to the hood and see what it looks like. Here is what the hood looks like. It had to draw an evasion chit, which brings it down to 27. It's got damaged radar, which means it's gonna lose that firing bonus it had. It ends up with three hull hits, taking it down from an eight down to a five, and its primary armament goes down to a six. So the Bismarck dealing some pain on the hood here. The battle is shifting. The Bismarck outnumbered two to one now. However, it's got some pretty magnificent firepower and it's done some pretty significant damage to the hood here. That brings us to the end of the fire phase. Now we go to step three, torpedo hit determination. The torpedoes were fired at ships that sank, so there's no sense in resolving those. They're both under the, under the waves here. Now we're gonna go to step four, which is movement. Slowest ships go first. Both the Prince of Wales with an evasion of 27, and now the Hood, which is down to a 27, are the slowest two on the board. They are gonna stay and fight. Uh, with the hopes of then maybe at the end of the next round they'll get reinforcements. And the Bismarck seeing it, it's got kind of put some heavy damage on the hood. And with the Prince Eugen under the waves, it needs to sink one of those to have any chance of winning this battle of the North Atlantic. The Bismarck is going to take these long odds and say, now we believe in the Bismarck. We're going to stick around. So we're going to slug it out another round here. So we're going to not move either. We're going to kind of leave us at long range. I think the Bismarck has the advantage there. Um, now, we're going to go to uh, the next step would be any abort combat attempts. No ships are six zones apart, so that stays there. Reinforcements, it's the end of round two, so that's not when reinforcements can arrive. That's beginning with round three, which is the next round. So now we're just going to go in and clean up the hit markers and remove the ships to finish up this round. We'll let these torpedoes run off the board. The destroyer flotilla is gone, and that ship is removed from the game, as well as the targeting markers, as well as the Prince Eugen is under the waves after its dramatic rush to try to close to torpedo range. The battle gets slightly simpler. Let's adjust the hood's damage here. So like we did before, we're going to move this down to uh, the three spots there, so down to a five tall, and we're going to remove the uh, primary armament on the stern down to a six. So the hood in a slightly troubling position here if the Bismarck can dial in on the range again. And the, yeah, the Bismarck has acquired the hood, so we know that. The target acquisition for the other ships is gone because the Prinz Eugen sank as well. Let's, and the Bismarck did not get hit. So we are done adjusting the damage. And that brings us to the end of round two. And with that, looking at how long the video has gone so far, I'm actually going to, and with how much firepower the Bismarck has left, we are actually going to pause the battle here and I'm going to come back very soon. There won't be a week break between this one and the next one, but I'm gonna publish, publish this one to YouTube and then finish this battle right away. So I'll be back very soon with the conclusion to this battle. The Bismarck can't last forever. If it gets the hood of Prince of Wales, I think it can run. So we will be back soon to finish this dramatic battle. Prince Eugen under the waves, the destroyer flotilla under the waves, the hood with some significant damage and the Bismarck as yet unscathed by either the Prince of Wales or the Hood. Let me know what you think. We'll see you in the next episode. I'll put a link to it as soon as it's ready.